Hey, if you or a loved one has ever complained about the Instagram algorithm in the past year, let me tell you, you're not alone. But honestly, I'm kind of sick of hearing people talk about it. Every single day, it's someone saying, oh my God, like I am, I'm never gonna grow. I'm stuck on X amount of followers. And I get it, Sarah. We all know it's hard to be successful, but here's the thing. Basically, I was watching a Vsauce video on YouTube about like isolation. It was basically this YouTube series where this guy locks himself in a room for three days straight. Yeah, it's entertaining, but it's also pretty unhygienic because this guy literally just pees in the corner and sleeps in the corner. Anyways, what I've learned is throughout watching that series, I was like, wait, this kind of makes sense. All of us have an attention span like a goldfish. I kid you not. Research says that I think in 2001, our attention span was 12 seconds long. Now in 2019, it's around eight seconds. And a goldfish is around nine. Nemo beat us to it. But what I've realized is the reason why we're complaining about the algorithm is because what we're really complaining about is fighting for attention. Every single day, we're getting flashes and flashes of new content on the feed, on YouTube, and creators like us are fighting for that gap. Now, everyone's trying to find a solution to convince Mark Zuckerberg to hopefully change the algorithm back to chronological order. I just don't think that's happening. Facebook and Instagram are making way too much money by what they're currently doing, which is targeted algorithm feeds. So I'm sorry, bud, but it's probably not going back. However, I wanna reassure your fear that there's still a way to grow on social media. There's still hope for your dream of reaching an audience. So here's a question. How do we really understand the algorithm and use it to our advantage instead of crying on the sofa? That's what we're gonna answer in today's video. All you gotta do if you wanna know is keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jade and you're watching a brand video make sure you give this video a like so far if you're enjoying it and you're kind of enticed by this subject i kid you not grab a snack because i'm about to say a lot of words that i probably don't know how to pronounce and it requires you to just really you know digest it slowly anyways um i'm really excited for this topic because i've actually have asked my youtube friends Haley and ryan to answer this question for me i know a lot of us are complaining about the algorithm but i wanted to know from pro youtubers themselves what they thought and this is what they said take it away Haley and ryan so i have a question for you okay uh as i said before Haley and you talk a lot about numbers and algorithms yeah. personally for you you make similar content based on what worked before do you feel that algorithms and data kills creativity in a space where you're trying to always create the best content okay in terms of the actual video I don't think it changes anything. I think it encourages creativity mm. on the title and thumbnail mm. because that's where I really push myself. Cause I see like my competition uh, kind of like, not slacking, but I feel like they don't take it as seriously as they could. So mm. I see the title and thumbnail as something that I really need to work on creatively. Cause otherwise no one's gonna wanna click on your video right. if it's not engaging and interesting. I feel like that's what we talk about more than actual concepts. Cause we're, I think we're decent at making good videos and creative videos, but it's just a matter of getting new people to watch them. And that's when the title and thumbnail come into place. So ultimately, I think it encourages creativity. No. What? I think it does the opposite and it actually enforces more creativity because I could do a chill video where I just like sit around and do nothing, but the algorithm forces me to come up with a better title, better video concept, something bigger and better and more out of the box. So it does quite the opposite, Jade. When does it not encourage, when do you think it kills creativity or makes you feel conform, like conforming to a trend or conforming to things that you don't want to do? I think whenever you sacrifice your style, when you sacrifice what you're passionate about or the algorithm, that that's when it can be detrimental to your channel ultimately because it's just not sustainable if you're making videos that you don't want to make. I think it's something to consider. It's definitely a balancing act for sure. All right, cool. We learned that maybe we're not looking at it so bad and there might be some optimism along the way. I don't know, I just, I haven't met too many people that really saw the algorithm as positive. So you guys are going to love you, Haley and Ryan. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, the question here is, you know, how do we really then utilize the algorithm to work for us? Because if it's really trying to benefit us creators, how do we do it? Where's the ABC formula, Jay? Just give it to me. All right, all right. I want to give you the formula because I have the secret, but before I do, I think we need to take a look at Hollywood and Netflix so you can understand what I'm about to say. Now, I know this might be confusing, but just hang on with me. Let's just take a look at Hollywood first. Basically, we all know that Hollywood makes films and videos that are primarily mainstream and big productions. Literally millions of dollars go into making their films. Now, let's look at Netflix. Netflix these days are actually creating so much original content. In four years, they actually a 3,000% increase in original content. And don't get me even started with YouTube. Dude, on YouTube, there's like, I think 300 hours of videos uploaded every single day, which means 5 billion viewers coming on YouTube. So what's happening is, as you can tell,
tell as traditional media goes away and we're focusing on digital, it's getting really competitive. There's just, there's a lot of people uploading, which means the attention span is getting more scarce. Now, let me connect the dots with my analogy with the isolation video I was watching. So Vsauce made a YouTube series where he was basically just trying to prove that he will go crazy in three days of locking himself in a white room. There's just research that if you stay in a room for yourself for like three days, you're gonna have extreme brain damage. And I can believe that. I can barely have the attention span to like read a book. I don't know how people do it. I can't read a book. If there's billions of content being uploaded every single year, plus our attention spans ever so fleeting, what does this mean for creators? Are we screwed for life? What do we do, Jade? So now that you understand that, it's getting kind of serious. Here's what I have to say. Let's take a look at how the algorithm works. I'm gonna show you guys this diagram. I'm gonna like talk through and we're gonna like work together. Grab a notebook if you're taking notes. Um, so basically this is how any AI technology works on your platform. So let's just take an example of YouTube. So on YouTube, if you ever search like how to bake a cake, there's a strategic layout on how those videos are ranked. There's a reason why maybe Martha Stewart is first and Hannah Montana is second, if that makes sense. So the order of how your feed looks is based on a few things. And one of the most important variables is specificness. Let me explain. I actually made a whole video about how to use the algorithm in the correct way. I'll link it below if you wanna check it out. But for this one specifically, we're gonna take a look at the specificness of your video. So what's happening is based on the keywords you search, right? So you kind of search for a video about how to bake a cake. YouTube will basically suggest videos based on who you are. What's happening is because there's a surplus of content uploaded, you can no longer can appeal to everyone at once. We're being segmented by our interests. So instead of finding how to bake a cake, you can find how to bake a cake for a broke teenager. What I'm trying to say is there's so much more diversity. It's actually kind of great. I mean, I used to watch YouTube videos where there was no Asian YouTubers. And you know, as more and more people started being okay with expressing themselves, I think it gives an even playing field for everyone. So take a look at this, okay? If you make more videos that are specific to a niche or a demographic, you're able to stand out, not to everyone, but to that tribe. So, you know, maybe our attention span is fleeting and maybe we're competing against billions of other creators. Yes, your content needs to be good, but it needs to appeal to a certain demographic. So today I'm gonna teach you guys, you know, the five things you can use to make your videos more specific. Now, the main overall umbrella that you have to understand if you're taking notes, understand that you can make it more specific by being more narrow in the person you're trying to target. And there's a couple characteristics you can base it out of. One, age. Age has a huge part in how you can be more specific. You know, instead of saying how to bake a cake, you can say how to bake a cake if you're under 21. You fill in the blank. Now step two, income. Income has a huge role because I know we're trying to be equal and all that fun stuff, but you know, diversifying for someone's income goal. For example, if you're someone doing education, maybe you make videos based on how much people want to strive for, whether it's a million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, or you're a broke teenager. More than ever, there's more ways you can unlock creativity. Now three, Location. You've seen this a lot with creators, but you know, travel videos or Paris life hacks or things that are based in someone's city has made it really comforting because now, you know, in your own local home, there's a creator out there. So you don't have to resonate with someone from Los Angeles, but someone from your own hometown. So, you know, yes, there's a lot of creators, but now you can find the one that you can relate to the most. Now for gender. If you can resonate with not just gender, but someone's personality type or interest, that's a great way to be more specific. For example, if you're making videos about vlogging, maybe you can do you know a day in a life as a fill in the blank. I think when you add in the specificness of the keyword, it will help you rank higher on searches. The last thing is one of my favorites, which is behaviorals. Behaviorals are basically making people specific based on their character and their emotion. So I think this is a huge thing because you can use all the four points, but still lack specificness in someone's feelings. And I think it's super important. For example, if you're making videos for a sad day, happy day, you know, People watch YouTube for different reasons. Not to get deep, but like I did have a problem with like eating food and like a disorder and like gaining weight. And I remember I would go to YouTube to basically watch other people eat food so I didn't have to do not do what I just said. That was when I was in a dark place mentally and just couldn't really be happy with myself. I'm still working on it, as you can see. Emotion has a huge part of how people consume content and the way you interact with people. So I recommend you guys use those, those five ways to make something more personalized and specific. Now that you know all this, you're like, great, Jay. I'm gonna leave the video, peace out. It was great to know you. Wait, I'll be honest, okay? Most of you guys will not take action. You wrote this in your notebook, you maybe shared this to a friend, but you're not gonna do shit with it. Now, if you're someone who doesn't really care about social media, that's okay, but I know a lot of us wanna maybe grow a brand online or, you know, quit your job or school and become a, you know, content creator. And this requires you to have some sort of discipline. And I know this is not easy, making content that specific is hard because a lot of you guys are scared to do that 
because it means you're gonna have haters. When you make content that's so specific to a niche, it's obvious you're gonna alienate a group of people and no one likes to be left out. I have FOMO, you have FOMO, we get it. But let me tell you something, okay? If you ever have a fear of dealing with haters, I wanna leave you with this last piece of advice. When someone's hating on you for being specific, realize those people that are leaving negative comments or hating on you or just leaving just horrible things, trust me, I've seen it all, realize that those are not your tribe. You know, think about your tribe, which is not a lot of people, but like a group of like a hundred true people that love you and relate to you. It's obvious you're gonna have people that are the polar opposite and not gonna like you. Those are not your audience. That's not your niche. And suddenly, whenever I said that to myself, whenever I get like a hate comment, I realize like, wow, like this is not my problem. You watching my video is just leaving me with another view. And I don't need to be stressed about it because I realize that I am only appealing to this demographic and that's okay. Not everyone's gonna love me, but I'm gonna be able to help these tribes because I'm gonna not play it safe. Playing it safe and not picking a niche doesn't really help you. All you're doing is just not really standing out. And as you can tell, when there's billions of content being uploaded every single day and our attention span is fleeting, the only solution is to be specific and find your tribe. Don't be afraid in being specific. Don't be afraid of the algorithm. And most importantly, just don't be afraid of the future. I know as technology progresses and we're scared of what fucking Elon Musk is gonna do on Mars. I think more than ever, we just need each other to just say, hey, I'm here for you. And you know, as humans and the psychedelic of us, we feel like we're always alone, but you're not, okay? I'm here for you. The Dharma Nation, which is this community online of YouTubers, got your back. But I just generally want you to know, like I care a lot about you and I'd love for you to stick on this journey if you enjoyed and you wanna learn more. Sincerely from the bottom of my heart, my goal for this channel has always been to help people take their passion into purpose and realize this thing is real. Like the social media thing that you thought was just a hobby is real um and i want to help you so yeah make sure you guys leave a comment oh shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you want to be the next comment winner all you gotta do is comment below let me know your thoughts i don't know if you guys enjoyed this video i definitely went outside of my typical niche Sorry, I'm not using my own advice. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm actually teaching a live webinar about how to use AI and data for your content. Um, basically, if you wanna know more how to work with me and be one of my students, I will link below how you can get mentorship from me and we can learn about marketing together. So check the link below, follow me on Instagram, turn on post notifications. Darmination, you guys rock and I love you so, so much. And I will try to update you guys on my company. I know you guys are all curious to know how my app is going. We have so many users right now that I'm kind of going crazy, but I can't leave you guys waiting. So I'll keep an update. So make sure you just turn on post notifications, okay? Okay, catch you guys in the next one. Cool.